Yes, there's a new Theta Z1 for 2021. Now, what's the difference between the current version and the new one? It's the storage capacity of 51 gigabytes compared to the 19 gigs for the current version. Now, that's going to be useful for those who are shooting in RAW because RAW photos take a lot more space than JPEG ones. Now, a lot of you are wondering, will the Theta Z1 ever have better video quality? Or will there be a lower cost version of the Theta Z1? Kind of like the SC is the lower cost of the Theta V. Now speaking of the Theta V, will there ever be a raw version of the Theta V? Or will they add a raw plugin for the Theta V? So these are great questions. And I had the opportunity to ask them straight from the source because I got to talk to the general manager of Ricoh's Theta division, Mr. Shinobu Fujiki. So here's my interview with Mr. Fujiki. Now, before we begin, I wanted to first of all say thank you so much to Rico for creating the Theta. Thanks to the Theta, it created a whole new industry, the 360 industry. The entire industry owes a debt of gratitude to you guys. Thank you for making time. I'm very excited to talk about Theta with the big 360 ambassador like you. No. I wanted to ask you guys about the Theta SC2. You know, when I first saw it, I read about the special features like the face uh, priority, the night exposure, and the independent lens by lens exposure. And I wasn't sure how useful they would be. But you know, after I've actually tried it, I found them to be more useful than I expected. And so sometimes I wonder, I have a difficult time choosing which mode to use and I was wondering if it would be possible to let the user have access to all three of them using the mode button without using the app. What do you think about that? Yeah, we are glad that you like all three modes. This function is only available for SC2 and it is really useful for all users both beginners and advanced. Currently, it is impossible to switch to all modes at once without using the app. We appreciate your feedback and will be making an effort to meet those ex expectations in the future models. Now, I'd like to ask you about one of the most common questions that people ask about the Theta series of cameras. So is it possible to have a Theta with a removable storage, like a removable micro SD card and a removable battery as well? Is that possible? Uh, yes, we have received similar requests uh, as well. Uh, but in order to keep the current size and design of the camera, and also to make the operation simple for the entry level user, we decided to pass on these additions for the SC2. However, we are planning to meet this expectation with the next model. I'd like to ask you about the Theta V. Now, uh, I understand that the Theta SC2 and the Theta V have many similarities, such as their uh, sensor and image quality. Um, and the Theta SC2 has been very popular. So I was wondering if Ricoh plans to continue creating the Theta V or will it be replaced completely by the Theta SC2? The sales of the uh, Theta V camera increased dramatically and the product has reached its end of life much earlier than we expected. Sales will end with the current stock we have. However, uh, we believe that Theta C2 would be a terrific replacement for most applications and delivers excellent results. Compared to Theta V, the SC2 has not only the same high quality resolution, 
uh, but also the uh, improved HDR function, which makes the images more natural. Furthermore, SC2 is much more affordable than V. So we highly recommend the SC2 as a replacement for the V. If we want to use plugin, we recommend Z1 instead. We believe the plugin is very important for theta, so we are planning to make it easier to use. That is all we can tell you for now. Look forward. Now, speaking of Theta V, would it be possible to add a raw mode to Theta V? I would love that. It is technically possible for us to add raw mode on Theta V, but we already finished production of this camera and it will not support raw mode. Based on uh, our market analysis, we think there is not much need for raw mode on the small sensor like the one TMV has. Now I'd like to ask you about the Theta Z1. I love the huge sensor. It, the image quality is really amazing. Now, one thing that I know a lot of people have wished for, myself included, is for the Theta Z1 to have a higher resolution video mode such as 5.7k or even higher would that be possible i think it would be very popular and i think people would be willing to pay even more for the theta z1 if it had a higher resolution video i mean that would be really amazing thank you for your request we are proud that many users are satisfied with the large sensor of the z1 we will be making an effort to meet these video expectations in the future models. Now, speaking of the Theta Z1, would it be possible to have the Theta Stitcher for the Z1 used without Lightroom? I know there's a way to use it indirectly if you modify some files, but I, I think it would be great if users could simply launch the Theta Stitcher even if they don't have Lightroom. Would that be possible? Uh, yes, uh, we believe that most of the raw processing is done in the Lightroom. So we offer our Stitcher as a Lightroom plugin format. If there are many requests for the standalone Stitcher applications going forward, we will consider how we support. So did you guys hear that? This is really important because, you know, I love Adobe Lightroom. I've been using it for over 10 years. It's one of my favorite pieces of software. But a few years ago, Adobe removed the option to buy it for a one-time purchase. And now the only way to get it is through a monthly subscription. And not everyone can afford that. So it's really important for us to have the option use Theta Stitcher without Lightroom and Rico is willing to do that if enough people are interested so whether they do that is entirely up to you so please let Rico know that we do want a standalone Theta Stitcher leave a comment with hashtag Stitcher and I'm going to collect all those comments and show them to Rico to let them know that we do want a standalone Theta Stitcher. Now the Theta Z1 is so popular that it's actually very hard to find and sometimes the people sell the used ones even for higher prices than brand new. Would it be possible for Rico to produce more Theta Z1 to meet the demand? Yeah, we are aware of the rapidly increasing demand and are happy to see it. But there have been complications in the supply chain due to COVID-19. Combine this with the high demand and the Z1 is hard to come by now, but we are trying to increase production on it now and hope to have more available soon. Now, a lot of people would love to have the Theta Z1, but it's too expensive for them. 
does Rico plan to create another version of uh, the Z1 that would be more affordable in the same way that the SC2 is somewhat like a more affordable version of the Theta V? I think if they made a more affordable version of the Z1, it would be very, very popular. Theta Z1 is a compact body equipped with 1.0 inch uh, CMOS image sensors and it's a model that is thoroughly focused on compactness and high image quality. Um, it is very difficult to reduce the cost of this model because the lens barrel module uh, which bends three times uh, with two uh, 1.0 inch sensors and six prisms uh, account for most of the uh, total materials cost. Speaking of Theta Stitcher, would it be possible for the Theta Stitcher to be used with the Theta V? We developed the Stitcher plugin for stitching raw file, which Z1 produced, so there is no reason to support Theta V. Now, I really like the Theta, but one issue that I find is that sometimes it is hard to connect with the phone app. So on my phone, I'm connected to the Theta's Wi-Fi, but the Theta app cannot find the Theta, even though third-party apps such as Google Maps or Google Street View can connect to the Theta. Is there a way to make it easier for users to connect the Theta to the app more reliably? Um, we are sorry to hear this is happening with your camera. We have received some uh, reports of similar problems, but uh, it is extremely difficult to reproduce the phenomenon on our side uh, because the wireless connections often depend on the environment and even with the same devices. Um, however, we know that it is very important point in terms of user experiences so we will continue to improve it. Uh, the 360 community would like to know how does Rico view the Theta series of cameras? Does it see the Theta series of cameras as an important part of the Rico Pentax family? Does it plan to grow it even more in the future? Uh, yes, uh, we do make it grow more. Theta has been recognized as a rare and important product that has succeeded in both the consumers and the business markets for Rico because almost all of our business focus has been on office equipment and business services. The Theta Z1 has especially been successful for high-end creative users as a camera which can create works in 360 degrees. And it's also succeeded in business fields such as real estate, used car sales, and construction. We believe that the demand for theta will keep increasing and we'll, uh, we will develop to meet the demand. I'd like to ask about the camera industry and how Rico looks at it. Now, it seems that in the past few years, the market for interchangeable lens cameras has been uh, much slower than, let's say, a decade ago. So I'd like to ask, does Rico look at the Theta Z1 and the Theta series of cameras as an area of growth? Yes, uh, we surely believe that uh, both the consumer use of 360 degree images and the services which use 360 degree images are expanding uh, which means the 360 degree market will grow for sure. The 360 degree camera business must be a growth area for Ricoh. As you know, due to the COVID-19, the market of virtual tour has been growing drastically. What do you think about it? Do you think uh, it will still continue growing going forward. 
Ah, uh, yes, that's an interesting question, isn't it? Um, I'm a bit uh, optimistic that virtual tours will continue to grow and because I think that the, the pandemic has created some permanent changes. So, for example, some real estate agents who have never used virtual tours before um, have begun to use virtual tours during the pandemic and I'm thinking that they, when they used it, they may have discovered that virtual tours do help their business. And so even after the pandemic, um, I believe they will continue to use virtual tours. At the same time, um, during the pandemic, um, I think there were some businesses that had less need for virtual tours, such as restaurants. But uh, if the uh, pandemic resolves, I believe that these customers will come back and begin using virtual tours again. So I'm cautiously optimistic that resolving the pandemic will help uh, virtual tours. Are there any other markets you think we grow? Yes. Uh, for 360 cameras, I think another potential area of growth is for their use as uh, cameras for personal videos and uh, because in 2019 uh, more and more people were already using 360 cameras not for 360 but for a reframed video to capture a view that's like an invisible flying camera now with 2020 fewer people were, were traveling so less people were using it for that purpose but hopefully when the pandemic is resolved, uh, I think we're going to see a rebound effect when we see more people again coming back to 360 cameras and using them to capture this third person view. And I think that trend is uh, something that will continue in the long term. Now, how about you? Do you think 360 cameras will continue to grow? Let me know in the comments. Once again, thank you very much for taking the time to meet with me. I really appreciate it. And on behalf of the 360 community, we say thank you very much. Thank you for giving us this uh, opportunity. We are ha always happy to hear users' feedback. And we'll keep trying to meet uh, your requests as much as possible. Thank you again. And sayonara. Mata imashou. Don't worry, get all good. Right. See you in 360. <laughs>